Hi everyone, Stepan here with another training game. Unfortunately, I have the black pieces in this one. I did not get the English, but what can you do? We're gonna play the semi-slav if we can. Oh, let me see if everything's okay, everything should be okay. So the last game was fun. I did get to play the English. However, my opponent offered the transposition into the Karo Khan. So I played that uh, <clears throat> and, and I beat my opponent in an equal end game. Uh, although I was a pawn up and winning before that, but I failed to convert cleanly. I don't know what my opponent is thinking about after d4, d5. If you play d4, you sort of have to play quickly after d5. Uh, knight f6 is flexible. This is what I choose to avoid g3 systems. Okay, now this to my mind is a mistake. Uh, playing knight f3 and e3 allows bishop f5. And that's just, in my opinion, equal for black. My opponent is, wants to play the collie system or, or something similar. Uh, now on c4, c6, I have the option to go queen b6 on queen b3. And my opponent failed to punish bishop f5 with an incorrect move order. Now we just have a queen's gambit where my pawn is outside of the pawn, when my bishop is outside of the pawn chain and I have a good position. I also could have tried uh, playing queen c7, but this I find more natural. And now after e6, you can see that this is obviously an improvement to the semi Slav. Uh, the difference is that his pawn, his bishop, excuse me, cannot get to f4. And if he could play bishop f4 here, this would be the London system in reverse, and he could force queen c8. In this case, firm control over the e4 square means that I'm better. And in this case, I can go bishop g4, f3, bishop h5, e4 takes, pawn takes, should be okay. Uh, I could also consider just leaving my bishop there and keeping firm control over the e4 square, which I think I'm going to do. Uh, however, I would like to play e5 at some point. Sorry about my computer fans, I'll try to move the mic away as far away as I can. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so I have the option to go bishop g4, bishop g6, leave the bishop there, uh, or play g5 even, which seems interesting. I want to go e5 later, <clears throat> that's for sure. So bishop g6, knight g6, h g6, e4 cannot be played, and I'm going to go e5. Seems very interesting. e5, queen e5, queen b7 is not good. So maybe play bishop g4 first to provoke further weaknesses. Bishop g4 f3, bishop h5, e4, takes, pawn takes. Nah. Maybe bishop g6, I don't want to give away e4 with tempo. And on bishop g6, knight g6, a g6, bishop d3, preparing e4. I do have b6 or e5. I'm very tempted to leave my bishop there, so yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I don't really care, he can just take on f5. I wanna prevent e4, that's my main strategic game. Even though I don't get to play e5, I'm not sure how his bishop is going to develop, since the queen is blocking b2 and the e3 pawn is blocking the long diagonal, so this seems favorable to me. Firm control over e4, no problems. Now, how does he develop? How does he develop the c1 bishop? That's going to be tricky if he does not play e4. And if the bishop goes to a3, it's still useless. So I'm simply playing against his idea of liberating this, this one piece. I'm very much used to this pawn structure in the Karo Khan. Uh, b5 is coming. I understand that uh, for the moment I can still prevent it with a6, but not really because on a4, knight d7, my rook still isn't defended, so I'm just going to ignore that and develop my pieces. He can play b5, 
<clears throat> and waste time on that. I'm gonna play b6 later anyway, unless he exchanges, in which case I take with the knight and have a good position. Rook e8, sensible move. If he takes on b6, I take with the knight. If he does not take on b6, then why did he play b5? And I can also go a6 next, forcing the the pawn to make a decision. Again, I'm just playing against the bishop. I never want to. I never want him to have this diagonal for the bishop, so I want his pawn to stay on c5. So I'm going to think a lot before any b6, and I'm implementing e4. Those are my ideas. I also want to jump in with knight e4 at some point to put pressure on the dark squares around his king with my bishop on the d8 h4 diagonal. And there will always be ideas of taking on c5 actually if I get my bishop if I get my bishop to f6. So knight e4 bishop f6. Knight d7 threatens knight takes c5. Also knight e4 <coughs> If he plays something like bishop a3 against that, loses to queen a5. So he's gonna have to be very careful. He's undermining the queen side, but that really doesn't matter at this point because he's still. Okay, no knight e4. Knight e4 or knight d7? Knight e4 seems good. Knight e4 castles, bishop f6 seems good to me. Knight e4 f3, I'm gonna take. No problems on e5 because his bishop is blocked and his knight isn't on f3 anymore. And now my pieces are coming towards his king. I'm playing quickly this game. That makes me happy. Usually I'm always slow and I get into time trouble. You can see how not being able to play e4 has made his position basically unplayable because he is a piece down. But honestly, I don't see how he's ever going to develop that bishop. I don't see that happening. He's going to have to play f3 and e4. That's the only way. And my rook is already on the e5. Okay. Now. Knight b to d7 uh, with bishop f6 will threaten knight c5. So I'm going to prepare that with bishop f6. Which also means that on f3 knight takes, I may have rook e3 ideas if the bishop moves. And of course, if the queen moves anywhere, I will have knight c5 immediately. Okay. I am going to take with the pawn now, or with the queen. Uh, I'm not sure. I could also take on c3 first and then develop my knight. Knight c3, queen c3, knight c6. And honestly, I don't want to trade my knight. Knight c3, queen c3, knight c6. Is my pawn ever in trouble? I mean the d5 pawn. Nah, I don't think so. I'll just take with the pawn. I don't want to trade knights. This makes sure that this pawn can never move. None of my pieces are fixed to the blockade. And now I can just go knight d7 and knight c5. I'm still playing against his one bad piece. And it's not as if the b-file is such a big deal, uh, because I'm going to play knight d7 and rook b8. It's all about the c1 bishop.
Now if he ever takes on e4, I take with the f-pawn, of course. Okay. Uh, that does not concern me, I think. So knight d7 seems sensible. I don't want to play a5. Uh, but if he pushes the pawn all the way to a6, he gets the b7 square, so I'm going to have to be slightly careful. Nevertheless, <coughs> I'm playing knight, BD, knight b7, knight d7, and now let's have a look at knight c5. Knight c5, if dc5 he loses, knight c5, if knight e4, then rook e4. Okay, knight c5, knight e4, rook e4, uh, dc5, bishop a1. Okay, this works. He doesn't have time for knight b5 or, or knight d5, I think, because uh, because he doesn't. I'll just take on c3. <coughs> yeah, he did not see knight c5. That's unfortunate for him. I did just open up the diagonal for his bishop, but I don't really care if I can win a central pawn, or not a central pawn, a c pawn. Your opponent left the game. You can claim victory in 72 seconds. That's not nice. I hope he comes back. It's not losing yet. I mean, I was setting up this trick for four moves. I played knight e4 and knight d7 and bishop f6. No, knight e4 I don't take with the rook, of course, I take with the knight. What was I thinking about? Knight e4, rook e4, and then he plays queen c5. Stupid. That's just stupid. I have to take on e4 with the knight. I'd actually uh, misplayed this position because I was thinking of rook e4. I just take knight e4. <coughs> now, my strategic aim is to play c5. I have to play c5 to get rid of the backwards pawn. And of course, while his d pawn is still pinned, that's going to be fairly easy to play, I feel. I would love to play a6, knight d6, knight b5, consolidating my pawn advantage. Rook b8, even if rook b1, sorry, I don't take on a5 because that loses the c6 pawn. On bishop b5, I have rook e c8, unpinning and defending. And I'm still playing against the bishop, which now of course has the diagonal, but what can you do? You either win a pawn or you keep the bishop hemmed in. I also have f4. F4 is very interesting. Oh, I may also have knight F2 at some point. Oof, many ideas at this position. This doesn't concern me one bit. Uh, I think C5 straight away is just a good move. C5, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes, bishop takes c5 bishop f3 ef uh, c5 bishop e4 f e4 i still cannot take yeah c5 is good getting rid of my backwards pawn tactically and if i can push my pawn to c4 which seems inevitable my position looks great of course, I'm not threatening to take on d4, I'm threatening to play c4. My queen is here. Let's just briefly consider rook takes. 
Yeah, nah. This seems better. I'm doubling my pawns. Now I push my pawn to c4 and protected past pawn on c4. This should be, should be a winning advantage when I play a6 and rook b8, rook b5. He prevents that, that's a good idea. So I think I should occupy the b-file first by playing rook b8. He has bishop c5, but I can always trade that off with bishop e7. So let's do that. Let's go rook b8, no bishop d6 tricks, I think. Ooh, I'm four minutes ahead on the clock. Two games in a row. Okay, the last game I did get into time trouble eventually. Okay, this doesn't work. I have rook b5. This was a bad move. Rook b5 allowing me to double. He does not have queen a4 because of rook b8. He is misplaying this strategically very, very badly. He's giving away everything I want to take. I also could have played rook b3, but it seems kind of unsafe to allow this pin to happen where he would be threatening queen takes. Maybe rook b3 was stronger than rook b5 now that I think about it. It prevents queen a4 altogether. Yeah, rook b5 was... I, I wanted to at least intuitively keep defending my pawn. I don't think he can trade all the rooks though. Okay. <clears throat> I think I just defend this with my queen. And on queen a4 I have mate. So queen c6, queen a4. Uh, rook b2, queen c6, rook b1, mate. So queen c6 works. I don't want to give up the file, of course. So I'm not going to be the first one to take. He doesn't have luft. So he's gonna have to watch out. And if he plays something like h3 now, I just play queen takes a6. Yeah, I would say this is losing for white at this point. I'm threatening queen a6 and he doesn't have queen a4. So that should be game over. Yeah. That, that's, I think this is it. I don't think there are any tricks left in the position. He had to play f3 as soon as possible. Now he doesn't have time anymore because I take on f3 and play queen e6. takes queen a4 still doesn't work because of checkmate so he has to trade yeah now i just win the pawn he wants to go into this end game wow okay i guess i have to oblige but the end game is just hopeless for him i'm just gonna take the diagonal with bishop e7 and that's it He would like to play bishop c5. I'm not gonna allow that. I'm just gonna win the spawn with my king and game over. This king is too far away. Yeah, that's it. He may have bishop c3, bishop a5. So I guess I should prevent that. Should I prevent bishop c3? Yes, I should. I'm gonna prevent bishop c3. I don't want to allow that. 
this is the only idea I fear, trying to give up the bishop for this pawn. So now that that's been defended against, it should be easy. If f3, I just play f5. This endgame is hopeless. He went into an endgame with bishops of the same color with all of my pawns on the light squares. And his only advanced pawn is on the light square, which means that it cannot be defended. And neither of my pawns can be attacked by his king. So He offers a take back. I'm not going to allow a take back for him to play bishop c3. No, no, that's the only thing I was afraid of. So I'm not going to allow it. Usually I allow take backs, but it was my mistake to play king f8. He allowed me to correct it, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to allow take back. It was a bad mistake to play king f8. Even though bishop c3 doesn't draw for him, because I don't have to take, uh, I did not have to get into that. There was no point in, in, in doing that. If, he ever, if his king ever goes to the other side, I just go c3 and win. This is hopeless. This, this, this is, there is nothing here for white. There is no way to draw this position. Even if I wasn't a pawn up, even if I didn't have the pawn on c4, it would still be winning for me. Because I would get my king to b5, take the pawn on a6 and, and queen. Now it's too late to go bishop c3 after king c2 because my king is going to win the pawn. Yeah, I, I, I mean he doesn't have to resign, I would resign. Uh, of course on f3 I had to play f5 because otherwise I would have given him a passed pawn. This way he doesn't have a pass pawn. Bishop c3, bishop c3, king c3, king c6, king b4, king b6 resigns. Because he can never go king c5. Because I just queen like that. Yeah, that's it. The bishop is dead. Look at this bishop. It was dead throughout the game. I find that very enjoyable. <laughs> Sorry. The, this is a dream position uh, which I would love to get in a tournament game. Unfortunately, I never get these. It's never this easy. Okay, he resigns. Good. Uh, I mean, I don't think we have much to say about this game other than my opponent just did not play well in the opening. Uh, Bishop f5 is easy for me to play. Okay, knight c3 is probably better than what he did. Queen b3, I don't think is a good move. Here, knight h4, yeah, and I just left my, my bishop there. I like bishop e7 as an idea, and this was played, can you guys see this? Okay, yes, you can see it. This was played three times, all the games were draws, uh, takes, takes, but I'm not really sure. Okay, the engine says plus 0.3. How the hell is he supposed to liberate his bishop? Well, we will see, I guess. b5. I had to go b6. Rook e8. Seems fine. b6 minus 0 0.4. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to get rid of his pawn on c5. Still b6. And I mentioned that during the game that I will have b6 at some point, but... Wait, 94 equal? Or 94 better for white? Why? Why? Okay, I have to take with this pawn. Okay, I can see it now. He has a very bad piece. But the engine still says white is better because of the pressure on a6 and I don't have the b5 square for my rook. Okay, that makes sense. This I'm going to learn from. So b6 was important straight away. So let's have a look at the position after b6, c, b, a, b. And a4, bishop a3 does not work. 
Ah, it just loses a point. Okay, sorry. Because the the knight is pinned to the queen and the pawn is pinned to the rook. Uh, but the bishop? Oh, okay, knight e4, bishop b, b4, rook c8. Okay, he just loses a piece. Uh, so after b6, takes, takes. Bishop b3, c5. c5, no. But rook c8 and then c5. Okay, this makes more sense. The engine says equal. After what I did, I thought it was much harder for him to play, but it wasn't. Knight d7, yeah, a5, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, knight c5, just knight c5, just winning. Yeah, okay, and from here, c5 has to be correct, it has to be correct. Okay, c4 has to be correct, no doubt about that, rook b8 is fine. Rook b3 or rook b5, the engine says rook b3, but rook b5 is still good. Okay, queen c6 has to be good, rook takes, yeah, and, and the endgame is hopeless, this is just, you can see that the engine says minus 4, minus 5, it's just game over. Okay, bishop e7 has to be played, and now what I was afraid of was this pattern. I'm not saying it works, but it's annoying. Of course, I don't have to take, I can just queen this pawn, so he, he doesn't have time for that. But I was afraid of that, that's the only thing I was afraid of. Other than that, a pretty clean game. I'm very happy. I mean, I didn't play b6. However, still, a win is a win. Uh, thank you for watching. I finally won some games. Uh, see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.